Hello everyone. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to uh, properly use and a few nice features of the advanced tabs element from essential add-ons. This is part of the free version. So I already have it here. And what's great about it is that we can use icons uh, or images in the titles. And for the content, we can use templates. There is also the option to have a vertical layout. And then finally, there is an option to have a, well, with a, a little bit of code that I will provide, there is an option to have like a bottom uh, layout like this, where the content above is what changes. So if we have a look from the editor, let's go on this one, for example. So now this one, the layout is horizontal. The icon is enabled. If we go under uh, content and also quickly, so the icon position is a great feature also. You can have it stacked. So on top of the uh, title. So I, it's quite uh, uh, versatile. So that's, that's, uh, that's what, uh, what I like about it. And then for the content, uh, the, so you can choose your icon or you can choose an image that you will have here. And then for the actual tab content, you can use, uh, use a saved template. So let's just say it was to go and then use my portfolio template. So then it just shows up right away. So I think it's it's quite a great option uh, for for a nice uh, content switcher, and then the others are still normal. So yep, and uh, and then the stylings options are good also. So you can add a padding and margin. You can style the tab title pretty much exactly the way you want. The, you can change the icon size, the gap. So let's say I wanted a larger icon. There is a lot of uh, t styling choices, mostly when we can compare with the tab element uh, from uh, Elementor 3. So it's, uh, it's quite, quite decent. And then the little carrot, you can remove it or you can keep it and you can style it the, the way you want. And that's uh, pretty much this. And then there is the option to have a vertical layout uh, with or without the icon. Here you can also place its text, but it doesn't really work for this uh, vertical layout. You can see the positioning is not great. So it's better to use inline. And then the, same, the content also, you have the same choice. So you can have an icon or an image. Uh, and then for the actual tab content, you can use a saved template. So it's uh, uh, very, uh, very convenient. And then finally to have the uh, tab titles at the bottom instead of at the top, uh, you will just need my little bit of code. So here under custom CSS, I pl place this code and that's that's what is moving it to the bottom so if I remove it it's at the top and if I add it it's uh, at the bottom so you will be able to find this code uh, in the article that I linked in the description so that's pretty much it for this one it, it was just a, a short quick overview it's a frequently asked question or to make a content switcher where you can insert whatever you want. So this is a, a great way where you can uh, insert uh, templates and it's quite polyvalent in the layout and in the styling options. So I think it, it's a, a, a overall a good choice. And uh, just another thing is that with essential add-ons, you have the ability, if you go here, essential add-ons and under elements, you have the ability to turn on or off any element and this uh, actually works uh, it will make the javascript and the uh, css files a lot lighter uh, by turning on only what you're using and 
and only what you need. So now, for example, I pretty much only have this enabled. And if I was to come to my page here under network and uh, search only for the right uh, keyword, so I can see that there is a, by this string, we can guess that it's uh, like generated depending on what options I, I found, uh, I, I choose, I mean, and then those are the two files that are loading from this add-on, so it's not loading anything else. And we can see here in the size column that the size is very, very small. So this is very good. Uh, every add-on should be like this. Quite, quite a few now are like this, but they are not all like this. And uh, I quite notoriously, uh, Elementor and Elementor Pro itself is not like this. So I really wish they would uh, integrate this feature. Actually, I think it's the the most uh, needed feature for Elementor and Elementor Pro would be to have this kind of uh, dynamic CSS and JavaScript files generate uh, generation because now they are using okay here so front end they are using a bunch of stuff actually but. Let's just try to, okay, so this is the one from Elementor free, and this is from Elementor Pro, and they are loading like completely. So still not, not massive files, uh, but not nearly as lightweight as what we just saw. And then here, this is another file that it's loading by default, and, and this is the, uh, JavaScript, so fork free and then fork pro, so another 60. So just with with these uh, JavaScript files, that could be much more lightweight if they were like dynamically generated, depending on which elements is are, are being used. Uh, this could be at at least like half the size, uh, maybe even more so. So I really hope uh, Elementor will add this feature at some point. So I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, please subscribe for more content like this.